I was driving alone on a deserted road well past midnight, and there were no other cars visible on the horizon. My phone had no signal, and the map had lost its reliability. I was feeling adventurous until I heard a strange noise, coming from under the hood of my car. I tried to control my fear and not panic, but it was clear I needed to look for help. I got out of the car and looked around, trying to figure out where I was, and then I saw a figure in black standing, at the edge of the road. As I looked closer, I saw the pale, cold face of a woman. She was wearing a white dress, her hair spilling down her back. But what was most impressive was, that she was holding a human head in her hand. I felt dizzy, my heart racing with fear. I couldn't realize what I was seeing with my own eyes, but then I heard the sound of a moving car, and instantly turned around, trying to see who was coming. But all I saw was a light, that blinded me for a moment and then darkness. Screaming for help, I moved forward. I didn't know where to go, but I realized that staying on this road, was a death sentence. I started walking quickly along the side of the road, trying to get to the nearest village or service station, but instead, I came across an old Asian temple. Subconsciously I felt that he was my only salvation. I stepped onto its grounds, and realized that I urgently needed to escape from this place, but the scars on my body, that I hadn't noticed before seemed to be facing this very place. Finally, I reached the door of the temple and knocked. When I was open, I saw an ancient monk in white robes, and asked him about the tourist infrastructure in the area. The monk, looking me straight in the eye, said that those who go in that direction rarely return. These words made me shiver with fear, but I was very grateful to the monk for his advice. I decided to stay in the temple for the night, and continue my journey the next day, when the sun would rise. However, as I was falling asleep, I heard voices, and rustling behind my bed. When I opened my eyes, I saw a shadow that looked like a woman, with a cub in her arms. She was walking towards me, and when she stopped by my bed, I saw that her face, was covered in blood, and the cub in her arms was dead. I screamed in horror as she started to come even closer to me. I asked her to leave, but she kept coming closer until I passed out. I woke up the next morning in the hospital, where I was told that I was found half dead in the road. My car was parked on the side of the road, and lying next to it was a note that I don't remember writing. The note read, Don't stand in the way pull over, go around. There is something here that drives people crazy. Beware, traveler, your life is at stake. I didn't know what happened to me that night, but I was never going to retrace that path again. Midnight had long passed, and I was still continuing my lonely automobile journey. I didn't think about the fact that I would later regret my decision to travel, in the middle of the night. The forest around the road grew thicker and darker. I turned on the radio, but instead of music I heard only noise, intermittent and insignificant. I began to sense that something was wrong. I quickly looked back, but saw nothing, but thick trees and dense darkness. I continued driving, and noticed the outline of a little girl standing, on the sidewalk with her finger held up. I decided to pull over to see if she was in trouble, but when I stopped, she silently approached my car. She had pale eyes, and long dark hair. She looked at me with a fierce, hard stare that made me uncomfortable. She told me to drive the same way, and I thought there was nothing wrong with that, but when I decided to leave, the girl wouldn't let me get out. All I could do, was try to get out. But as soon as I hit the gas pedal, the car stopped. I started to get worried, when the girl moved closer to the window, and asked me in a somber voice, Do you know there are spirits in here? I began to look around warily, and noticed that the trees began to move, and a noise like voices were heard. I began to realize that I was in a very dangerous situation, but I could not move. Then I saw a figure emerge from the darkness, followed by another and another, and another, and another. 
Soon there were several screaming, haggard figures around me that I couldn't recognize, but I knew they weren't friendly. I began to panic, and tried to jump out of the car, but the door was blocked. There was a knock on the window, and it was gone, when I turned around to see, who it could have been. I decided that the best thing for me to do, was to try to let it all make sense, and drive away from this place. I started the car again, and tried to move, but the interfering figures, danced even more dangerously and insistently, literally consuming my car with their noise and screams. In desperation I tried to hit them, but it was useless. I turned to the girl, but she had disappeared without a trace. I realized that something sinister was surrounding me, and the car began to shake. At that moment I heard some kind of sound, which again interrupted the noise of the radio. The sound was quiet and rhythmic. It sounded like human breathing. I couldn't see anything, but I felt that someone was watching me. I tried to run away, but my car was too weak to give me any chance of escape. I was up to my ears in fear, and thought about my car being blown up, by some inexplicable force, and I would be left here forever. At the edge of the forest, the car slowed down. I rested my head against the steering wheel, my ribs ached with pain, I looked out the window, and saw a shadow rapidly approaching the car. I realized they had caught up with me, and all my prayers were in vain. They wanted only one thing and I realized that I could not count on being saved. Finally all I heard, was a piercing scream, and everything went silent. I don't know, how much time passed, but when I regained consciousness, I was already in the hospital. Nurses and doctors surrounded me, and told me that I had been found, on the highway in a badly damaged car. I was in shock, but I couldn't forget everything that had happened that night. I asked the doctors to discharge me from the hospital and went home. Since then, I have never been back on that stretch of road again, and I always try to avoid driving at night, especially on low volume roads. I just don't want to encounter anything like that again and my horror story will forever be etched in my memory. As soon as I got on the highway, I felt very tired. I knew I would have to drive for at least another hour before I reached my hotel. I turned on the radio, and opened the windows, trying to tune into the fresh air. Suddenly I heard a strange sound, like the sound of branches being squeezed by the wind. I looked in the rearview mirror, and made sure I couldn't see anything. I relaxed and continued driving, covering the windows again. After driving a few more kilometers, I saw a girl in a white dress, on the side of the road. She was standing alone and looked helpless. I decided to help her and stop. She asked me to take her home, but something in her voice, made me suspect something wrong. I decided I needed to go faster and started driving. After a few minutes, something dark and unidentifiable appeared on the road, and moved in my direction. I realized I had underestimated the danger, and tried to run away, but my movement was blocked. It was something I had never seen before. It gave off a foul odor of rot and decomposing remains. I realized that my life was in danger, and everything possible had to be done to avoid this horrible creature. I turned the car around, and started driving fast in the opposite direction. But to my horror, I realized that nothing was working. Something strange, as if the road itself, began to pull the car backward, even as I accelerated. I felt like I was sitting in a trap, and there was no way out. Something made me stop, and I suddenly noticed that the girl in the white dress, was now sitting in the back seat of my car. She didn't say a word, and I noticed that she looked very strange. Her eyes were completely white, like a zombie's, and the skin of her hands, was as pale as silk. I turned sharply and screamed, but she only smiled, showing sharp crooked teeth. I was terribly frightened, and felt that I had no chance of escape. I couldn't believe that my life, would end this way, without any warning or explanation. My car started vibrating, and rocking as if something, was trying to get out of it. 
I tried to open the door, but it was locked. I felt something hard greedily digging into my leg under the seat, and I started screaming and banging on the door. But it was all in vain. I knew it was the end. I couldn't stop what was happening. Suddenly a blinding light flashed on the road, and the girl disappeared imperceptibly into thin air. I saw that it was a police car that honked at me and asked me to stop. I was shocked and stunned, but I realized that a strong argument would be needed to explain what had happened. I got out of my car and approached the stopped police car. The police officers asked me what had happened, and I told them the whole story of how I was going to drive down that stretch of road and what had happened to the girl in the back seat of my car. They looked at me like I was crazy, but after I provided them with some evidence, in the form of hair, and pieces of cloth, found on my car, they secretly took me to the nearest hospital for psychiatric evaluation. As I understand it, there was no chance of my being believed. No explanation, no theory could account for what happened that night. I was one of many, who fell victim to the mystical force that guarded that stretch of road. After that, it took me an incredibly long time to get over that story. I never drove on that highway again, and I didn't want to witness what happened over and over again. That night changed me forever, and I now know that some mystical forces cannot be unraveled or understood, or we risk losing forever what we believe to be reality.